concept. I didn't even link in with it. I couldn't, I didn't understand it. So unless you understand it yourself, there's no point, you know. The band reworked the piece with performance footage since by 1995, the Cranberries had become a touring favorite. Dolores has such a unique sound with her voice. I think it's really cool. It turns me off. <laughs> I don't think we'll ever be the over-the-top um, show-off glamorous -y band or anything, but I mean the band has gotten bigger and the demand has gotten bigger at the live shows, so it's a little bit more theatrical in a way. But uh, it's still pretty much just rock and roll. Can you talk about what it is that makes you decide to, to have a certain look? Oh, it's just kind of the, mo the periods you go through, you know. You don't have to have long blonde hair and big huge knockers to be nice, you know. Right. You can be small and cute and be sexy uh -huh. too, you know. Rock stardom also brings plenty of media attention. Some good, some not so good. You know, the media can be a pain in the ass. <laughs> Sometimes people try to portray it as like, I'm like the Hitler of the band or something, you know. Like they're all afraid of me, the three guys are. The room is a truth. She's just as tough as she seems. <laughs> a Weirden chose not to laugh it off when in July of 95, a tabloid reported that she played a concert minus her underpants. It was something that I would have ignored, but I think uh, my husband wasn't impressed about it. <laughs> and he was going, do you want to let these people make it out that you use your sexuality to get where you've gotten today? If I wanted to show my ass off, obviously. Hey guys, you would have seen it in videos this stage, you know. So, so I said, okay, you know, let's uh, let's go and do something about it. A Weirden won a settlement and gave the money to War Child, a charity for young victims of war. So it was cool. I just cleaned up my reputation, and and also some kids got some cash, and some media got a kick in the ass who deserved it. Dolores got the last word through a song and video expressing her true feelings about the press. There have been times in my life where I felt like I've been in a cage, you know, because there are you running around stark naked in your house, la la, and there's someone hanging around outside with a camera. So we put the uh, photographers into the cage. It was harassment, not my forte, but you do it very Coming up, the Cranberries Crusade against drugs and for the departed. I think by the end of 90s we were starting to get fairly heavy. There was, but at the same time, not over the top, you know, it's not like Metallica or something. Though the Cranberries had once said no to power chords, we knew we didn't want to be like heavy metal. In late 95, they brought their newest collection of songs to Bruce Fairburn, producer for ACDC, Aerosmith, Bon Jovi, Van Halen, and other big haired rockers. But they had their reasons. I thought the way he, tr he treated um, say, like Steve Tyler's vocal was really cool, it was really raw. Yeah. And I liked that because I felt previously that. You know, I like to kind of have character when I sing. One of the things I really enjoyed about working with the band and working with them as songwriters is that they're able to get back to a, an arrangement, a format of presenting a song that's there in three minutes. And I miss Harkens back to a lot of the early arrangements that were going on in the 60s, Beatles songs. I think you can kind of tell, like on this album, John Lennon, Electric Blue, Salvation, those are the ones we call. Mm -hmm. And the rest of them then would have been, like, mm -hmm. say, I wrote Zombie, I wrote Hollywood, mm -hmm. kind of ones where the chords are more closed, mm -hmm. you know, concentrating the melody on my voice. Whereas when Noel comes up with the, the chords, Sometimes they're quite melodious because that, that is his voice. To the Faithful Departed was released in April of 96. The somber title is part of a Catholic prayer for the dead. And the next one is another one of our new songs. It's about a man I recognize as a hero, as a great man, a fantastic spirit. His name was John Lennon. 
the album it's a tribute to everybody who's died but it's a celebration John Lennon died JFK died he was an Irish man my grandfather died these are all people that they gave me something they went away but something came in here from them and it's still here Kurt Cobain was like, a, he had a really good heart, he had a really good head, and I think he was a very genuine artist. Every song he wrote was so real and he had something to say, you know. I think it was quite saddening for the band as well to see all these other young artists and bands, people dying, people just not being able to handle it, you know. The Cobain story and the ensuing spate of drug-related tragedies gave the Cranberries' first single, Salvation, an eerie resonance. I understand if drugs really haven't been much of an issue for you guys. No. I mean, of course they have been, and yeah. we've had our moments. It's always there, the easy way out. I know that if you kind of get into that, it's just so hard to come back because it's just mm. completely a heavenly escape. Salvation, salvation, salvation is free. Salvation is saying that you can handle it as strong as an individual without taking these substances. You don't have to go and kill yourself. Of course, some people can't handle drinking either. Well, bottle of port, baby. How do you I'm like, you know? No, I'm not, I'm not advertising here. Do you see a distinction there? I mean, like you said, you, you know, you haven't stopped drinking, so. Oh yeah, but I don't drink like first thing in the morning. Right. I used to kind of drink a lot. I used to get really bad drinking. So it's like, I think, you know, whether it's alcohol or whether it's whatever, I realized that I needed to chill out on that, you know? Because it was like I'd wake up and, hey, wrecked the place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me? The tour to support the third album was interrupted in June of 96 when Dolores's old ski injury I've got screws in there and a fiberglass ligament was hurt again during an Australia show. You're kind of so high you don't feel pain. So when I jumped I do remember thinking, you know, but I just thought, nah, I just went down on the adrenaline. But I remember when I came off stage it was like just going up like a balloon. And the next day I was on crutches. I got a custom made. It's just like when you're on stage, it's so easy to screw it up again. You spent so much time on the road the last three, four years, and and yet you're starting a life. You, you're engaged as well. Dolores is married. You find it's like, wow, at some point the band's going to have to be, you know, in its place along with these other things going on in my life. Yeah, it's just a case of finding a balance. Yeah. And uh, I think we've all quite managed to hold it together well. You know, we haven't gone off the rails or anything. The band is, is one thing and it's like a little family and you're very close and you, you have experiences in life that you can only share with those three, those three guys. I have a relationship with Mike Ferg and Noel that I only have with those three guys that I don't have with my husband. It's kind of like having an affair, I suppose, you know, it's like you're banned. Thank you.